Hey yo! So Leviathan's coming out in a week and I hope you are as stoked as I am. I can't friggin' wait. But for now, Trial of Shiva EX1 is going to be covered here in this video. And for me, I had I don't really have really good uh, magical fire DPS. So actually I brought a pretty weak DPS to this and still managed it. Zack with Ifrit Sword um, from the Ifrit Summon. And then I also brought his stream guard, but I only have one copy at level 80. So if you are a, if you don't have strong magical fire DPS or a newer player, should still be doable. As for recommendations, Aerith with her egg wand is really good. Barret's solid bazooka or other magic attack uh, debuffs are great. Zack with his stream guard is one of the best weapons you can bring to this fight. Lucia with Rose Musket is also very nice, and then Matt bringing Core Defender is great, or anyone else with AoE Magic Defense. Special shout out to Nameless for the stream phase in this fight, it can be really useful with the 2 ATB um, Telluric Fury ability. Other than that, the recommendations that I have in general for the fight are to bring the duo summons, Ifrit and Bahamut, to raise your fire damage, and then Ifrit summon itself to do a bunch of fire damage. And then you want an AoE um, magic defense weapon, so something like Bandage Sword, Core Defender, Sleek Collar. Um, you want a single target cure can be pretty useful. Obviously you want fire damage in materia and weapons. And then Ice Resist weapons can also be pretty good, so that's the Ifrit weapons and the Duo Summon weapons all have Ice Resist, so they can help quite a lot if you're struggling. And then a Magic Attack debuffing weapon can also be super useful, um, and that would be something like Mad Minute, Solid um, Bazooka, or Gold Collar. Those will all be super helpful in this fight, because Shiva does tons of magic damage. go over some of the fight mechanics. So in the start of the fight, Shiva is going to silence your party and lower their ice and magic resistance. And because you silenced, you will have to debuff her magic attack with a physical weapon, physical move. Um, so yeah, when she does that, debuff her magic attack before the diamond dust comes off. Then the diamond dust will come and obviously defend that. After diamond dust, she will use freezing veil, which is her sort of ice age bar. And you want to deplete that bar with fire damage before her magical focus comes up. Um, so you will have a bit of time, about three or four rotations or something like that. And then you can stun her if you deplete the bar. And when she's stunned, use your DPS, of course, fire, and use your limit break, summons, etc. to do as much damage as possible. Then after she recovers from her stun, she will use Freezing Veil again. This time it's pretty hard to deplete her gauge. So I would debuff her, I believe it's physical attack, I'm going to be real honest here, I'm not actually sure what heavenly strike if it's a physical move, but debuff her physical attack, magic attack, heal and buff the party member that's being targeted. After the heavenly strike, obviously you defend that, she will go soon after that she's going to go into double cast, which is super dangerous, so as you can see on the right side, it is very important to be prepared with a magic attack debuff for one, preferably high potency and ATB on your whole party for the double cast right after the Heavenly Strike. So straight after the Heavenly Strike, she will use double cast and you want to lower her magic attack as soon as possible so she doesn't wipe you out in the stream phase doing double casts of her abilities. And then you want to break the stream phase as fast as possible. It's Diamond Sigils, so just do your lowest ATB moves like Ruins or Telluric Fury if you brought Sephiroth and Nameless. Once you've interrupted her, you want to obviously heal up and deplete her ice edge gauge once again, doing fire DPS. And then when she's stunned, you're going to do fire DPS and your summons and your limit breaks again. For the final push, she's going to go back into the original rotation. So silence plus ice and magic uh, defense debuffs on your party. So again, debuff her magic attack with a physical move, defend the diamond dust. And then when she goes into freezing veil, same story, deplete her bar with fire damage before she does magical focus. And then of course try to defend her moves when she goes into this phase. The ice core impact, ice bomb and ice bomb volley so that she gets a little bit less charge on her bar. 
then either stun her and finish her or just finish her even before she gets stunned with fire damage, limit breaks and summons. And of course magical fire damage is better than physical in this fight. So this is my team. As you can see my Zac uh, setup is actually super weak. I'm using a Freed Sword which is maxed out but it is a summon weapon so it's not super strong. And then a single copy level 80 stream guard as mentioned. So not a very strong DPS. He's got Ifrit, of course, and some stat sticks. And his um, sub equipments are for fire potency. So he's got about 10k HP, 2.5 magic attack, and then the following uh, R abilities. So only level 4 magic attack, 5 fire potency, and 5 HP. Nothing crazy. Actually, pretty weak, all things considered. My Barrett is got the, this new outfit which makes him super chunky, uh, 12k HP, also brought solid bazooka for the high potency magic attack debuff which is super useful and then the a level 4 version of the uh, duo summons to raise my fire damage. His setup is mostly HP and defenses so uh, ice resist, magic defense, you can see boost HP 7, Magic Defense 3, Fire Potency 3, and Ice Resist 3 are the most important things there. He's also got the Indomitable Soul, which helps. Um, then I brought Matt with his Gigantic Shield and Prime Number this time, because I believe there's not much physical damage. Heavenly Strike might be, but yeah. Core Defender for the AoE Magic Defense is also super important. Fire Materia to do a bit of extra damage. And then I prioritized heal, HP, and ice resistance on Matt. The so 9k HP, 2.3k heal. He's got HP 4, magic defense 2, heal 6, and ice resist 4. So that is pretty much my party, so let's get into the run. So as mentioned in the breakdown, you want to um, debuff her magic attack at this point with physical moves because your magical moves have been silenced. And then defend the diamond dust. Then she goes into Freezing Veil, so you want to obviously heal up a bit, but prioritize doing magical fire damage to lower her gauge and try to block her moves so that she gets a bit less charge. So as I mentioned in the beginning, you have about three or four rotations of her moves to beat her gauge. If she does end up getting magical focus off, which is the permanent undebuffable magic attack, you will probably die. So try to deplete her gauge before that. If she gets magical focus, just start over. Hopefully at this point, when you get to the stun, you will also have your summons um, charged. Mine are pretty close. So there's the stun. She lowers her own magic defense, so she becomes more vulnerable. And you want to drop your limit breaks and summons during the stun. So I'm just doing a little bit more to get them ready. And obviously Crimson Flare first to make my Hellfire do even more damage. Now she goes into the Freezing Veil, really hard to defeat this gauge, so if you can't, I recommend debuff her magic attack and heal and buff the targeted character, so in this case it's Barret. And hopefully if you have enough HP and or ice resistance, you will survive. And this is where it gets tricky because she's going to use double cast, so you see I've already got my magic attack debuff um, casting. 
and I'm using a gigantic shield, so if you have any defensive limit breaks, they will be really useful during double cast. She does tons of damage, and then just use your lowest ATB abilities to break her stream phase. So in my case, it is just Ruin. And then during the interrupt phase, obviously you want to heal up a bit, but you also want to prioritize doing as much magic fire damage as possible, so that you can defeat her Ice Age gauge once again. And then hopefully if your summons are high enough level, you'll have them ready again for the stun. So just rinse and repeat that. and Flare into Hellfire to do maximum DPS. And then she will go back into the original rotation. So, Silence and Defense is down. If you couldn't defeat her gauge, just do the same thing. Lower her magic attack, make sure you topped up, and block the diamond dust. And now, you just want to defeat her gauge and or finish her with fire damage, while of course blocking her attacks and staying topped up. In my case, she was charging her Ice Age Gage a little too quickly, um, faster than I could defeat it. So it's just a matter of doing fire damage until my summons are back up and then finishing her with my summons. Yeah, as you can see, um, Zack is my main DPS for this fight, and yeah, I'm not using the greatest setup. Of course, my Ifrit Sword is um, ob 10 because it is a summon weapon, still doesn't make it very strong being a summon weapon, and my Stream Saber is single copy level 80. And I can still complete this stage, so hopefully you can do the same. Even though I couldn't defeat the gauge at this phase, I now have both of my summons ready and look how low she is. It's a quick finish. So yeah, that is that. Hopefully um, either my run itself or the information provided before helps you complete your own run. And yeah, have a fantastic weekend. Get stoked for Leviathan the new water-based summon, and see you in the next one. Bye-bye.